We welcome you in to this week's Protect the Den. I am Jared Ivins alongside Bryce Larson. How you doing today, Bryce? Oh, you know what? It's a cold day today. Freezing. And um, it's like 17 degrees. Yeah. And I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning, and that's how I'm doing today. But I'm pumped to be hey, here. Hey, I woke up at 6. No, not much farther after you. No worries. Let's go. It, it is January 15th, 2020. We are kind of switching things up a little bit with the different mic stands, also a different background, and we're just excited to be here on Protect the Den. It, it's Absolutely honestly... pumped. It's such a fun ride. Yeah, learning. Right. We're, we're learning so much as we do this. Yeah. Let's break it down for you today. All right. Our show rundown. We're going to give you the headlines. We are going to run through our new Wolverine of the Week, Brand Hall new. of Fame inductee. Let's go. I'm ready for it. We're going to go through the 24-hour dribble. We're going to recap UVU at Seattle mm -hmm. that happened over the weekend. And we're going to preview New Mexico State for tomorrow night. And then we're going to finish off with our bold predictions. That's how it's going to go today. All right, starting off with our headlines. Men's basketball had a tough loss on the road at Seattle on Saturday. They lost 83-50. to They fall to 7-11 overall and 1-2 and overall in WAC play, and they take on the WAC leaders, New Mexico State, tomorrow night at home, 7 p.m. on the WAC Digital Network as well as ESPN 960 Radio. That's going to be a great game. We need everyone in the, in the Valley to come out for that one. We really need to protect the den for that one. That one's going to be a huge game. All right, women's basketball is on a five-game win streak after beating Seattle in Orem, 70-58. to 58. They're, they're on fire. Absolutely. We love it. They play at New Mexico State tomorrow night at 6 p.m. That one will be on the WAC Digital Network. Sophomores Zane Fair and Isaac Manning have been named the Ticket Smarter WAC Men's Track and Field Athletes of the Week. Fair took home bronze in the 60-meter hurdles at the BYU Indoor Invitational with a time of 8.19 seconds. Now, that time is third overall, third in UVU history. Amazing. And that's the top time in the entire WAC this season, so he is on fire. Manning took home gold in the men's heptathlon at the Idaho State Snake River Open, and he had a personal record of 4,839 points, which is fourth all-time at UVU. Yeah, congratulations to all those Wolverines out there that competed over this last week. Exactly. Now, that's it for the headlines. So we're going to jump right into our Wolverine of the Week. Uh, this one, this one's our fourth Wolverine of the Week. Yeah. Just to give you a short recap, we've had Mark Madsen, our first ever Wolverine of the Week, Taylor Vertel, and Maria Carvalho. So a great class, a great group of Wolverines that have won this award. And now we're capping it off with the brand new Wolverine of the Week, Abby Miller. Congratulations, Abby. She was the 2019-2020 Gatorade Utah Volleyball Player of the Year. Amazing. She's a freshman. A freshman. And she's on fire. Absolutely amazing. Going to be a huge pickup for the Lady Wolverines going into next season as she will, like Bryce said, be a freshman. That's going to be huge for the next couple of years. Yeah. Great so award. Huge contributor for the Wolverines. Abby, we're seasons. very happy for you. We're very proud, and we're excited to welcome you to uh, protect the den as the Wolverine of the week. Absolutely. All right, let's shift gears a little bit, going away from Wolverine of the week. Now we're going to head into our next segment. We're going to talk a little bit about the 24-hour dribble that's going to be happening on campus here starting today, tonight, and going all the way till tomorrow, right up until the game. Yeah, it begins tonight at 6 p.m. Um, just some of the things that will be happening later tonight. 9 p.m. is the volleyball tournament. Um, and then at midnight, where I'm going to take you down, the Mario Kart tournament oh. begins. So I'm okay. very excited to watch you lose to me. You ever seen me Princess Peach, <laughs> dude? I don't Good luck. lose. <laughs> Good luck. luck. Uh, it, it's not needed. Ah, uh, you're going to need it. Yeah, we'll see. Today. So you can follow that uh, that schedule. It'll be on UVUSAA on their Instagram page. We'll also be tweeting and posting that out, so you'll be able to, to see the schedule for that. All of it building up to the huge game tomorrow night at home against New Mexico State. Yeah, most of those events are going to be in the Rebecca Lockhart Arena, so make sure you get out and support for that. It'll be lots of fun. Definitely. 
Well, looking back, um, UVU men's hoops took a very tough loss on Saturday against Seattle. Bryce, maybe you can break it down a little bit for us. Yeah, so over the weekend, UVU men's hoops made the trip up to Seattle, Washington, where they played WACFO Seattle, and they didn't start very well at all. They weren't finished very well at all. It wasn't a very good game <laughs> for our Wolverines, but... In the end, they ended up losing 83 to 50. Mm. Had one of the poorest shooting performances of the season and probably of UVU history. And of any of their careers. Listen to this, from the field, 13 for 52, 25%. Yeah. From three, three of 20, 15%. How many total turnovers? 18. Oh my. 18 total turnovers. Only one player in double figures for the Wolverines. It was Jamison Overton, who had 10. Brandon Avery and Trey Woodbury both had 9. Just a really tough game for the Wolverines. Really a tough loss and kind of a burden put on them. Really hope they can be able to put that behind them. Yeah. You no, know, it, it's very true, all of this, but... The important thing is what the Wolverines can take away from this loss that they had in Seattle. Okay, I think something that they can take away from this loss that they had in Seattle is just being able to put it all behind them, mm. to focus on New Mexico State, and really to go into this game against New Mexico State having a chip on their shoulder and also knowing that there's nothing to lose. Yeah. All right, they've... they've they know what it's like to lose. They don't have anything to lose. They're 7-11. and 11. They, they can go out tomorrow night and give it all against New Mexico State at home in front of their home fans, and hopefully they're going to be able to pull off the W tomorrow night. Definitely. What do you think, Jared? Well, they need to, A, shoot the ball better. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if you can shoot the ball worse than what they shot on Saturday at Seattle. So I think that one is a given, and I, I do think they'll be able to shoot better. We'll talk more about that in our bold predictions. But... Another thing they need to take away from that Seattle loss is they need to buy in more to what Mark Madsen is coaching them. They need to get the vision. Obviously, it's Mark's first year, Coach Madsen's yeah. first year at the helm. There's always going to be some wrinkles. Yeah, they've lost a couple players to rivals BYU, to other WAC foes, and they need to be able to buy into what Coach Madsen's teaching them yeah. and coaching them and just focus on the little things. The turnovers, Bryce, that's the one thing they need to take away and not do ever again. That's true. Yeah, 18 total turnovers is absolutely ridiculous. But you can't win basketball games having no. 18 turnovers. You're, just, you're literally just handing them the ball. Okay. 20 you, possessions of the game. You miss, you miss shots. That's, that happens. That, that's fine. You need to be aggressive. Get to the free throw line to get your – that's one thing they did well is they shot over 80% from the free throw line. Yeah. But shooting happens. Turnovers is inexplicable, and that's where they lost the game. Like you said, they're giving – they gave Seattle 18 extra possessions that they could have scored on compared to Seattle scoring on. Yeah, no, 18 times 2. Can you do the math for me? Yeah, that's big. 36. Oh, 36. How many did they lose by? Ah, uh, a lot more. They lost by 33. So 20, 27, 80 to 53. Yeah. They lost big. They lost yeah, big. 80 to 53. That's 30. 30. Mm-hmm. It's big. Seven. <laughs> Quiet over there. So going into this week's New Mexico State game, Bryce, what can we, uh, what can we look forward to in that game? Well, the math uh, by the Protect the Den um, hosts is going to be better. Really? Okay, yeah. Okay. That's we're gonna a be, promise. We're, we'll be better going forward. <laughs> now, uh, looking forward to this uh, New Mexico State team, they are on a six-game win streak. Okay, they're hot right they now. They figured it out. Yeah, they are rolling. They're three and zero in whack play. Mm. Okay, and they their most notable wins have come against Mississippi State and also Colorado State. Those are both away games. Um, so some great wins by them. Definitely. Looking at at this game, Bryce, Mexico State. They're twelve and six overall. They've been stellar at home. They're seven and one at home this season. They've done okay neutral sites, but they've really not played well on the road. Yeah, they really love that Pan American Center that they play in. <laughs> it's true. 
They're two and three on the road, so this is a big time stat for UVU. Yeah. This is a time where they're welcoming him to a hostile environment at the UCCU Center on the road in Orem. UVU needs to protect the den. Yeah, absolutely. This is home court. This is where we know where to play. This is where we can thrive and score and win. And UVU needs to do all that they can. You know, this season is so wide open in wax and play because California Baptist just barely joined Division One sports, so they have a whole season that they can't play in the postseason. Yep. So they're not going to be able to play in the WAC tournament. No. Nope. All right, so throw them out. They're in second right now. Grand Canyon is on a down year. They are struggling. There are some things happening in Grand Canyon. They have a lot of problems going on down there. But they can win on any at home. You've seen the environment that Grand Canyon can get at home. Very true. And so randomly on any night, they can beat New Mexico State. They could yeah. beat the Wolverines, or the Wolverines could beat them. Yeah, and then you have a Kansas City squad who's very up and down. One night they're going to go. They went into New Mexico the other night and played them very well, 74-71. to 71 Yeah. They lost. So these things are, you know, Utah Valley just needs to hit that stride at the right time because they're going to get their shot in the WAC tournament. They just need to continue to win games, and this would be a huge confidence booster to be able to beat New Mexico State at home tomorrow night. Definitely. Three keys to the game that we have identified. Number one, UVU needs to shoot 50% or better from the field to be able to win. New Mexico State is averaging 45% from the field. UVU is averaging 43%. So that's number one, keys to the game. UVU needs to shoot better than 50%. Number two. Our second key to the game for tomorrow night, UVU needs to limit their turnovers to 10 or less. All right, both teams are averaging 14 and a half turnovers per game. It'll be huge for the Wolverines to keep it under 10 and to be able to push New Mexico State's up over that 14 and a half mark. And then, as we said, that's going to put more points on the board as long as, you know, they can put the ball in the bucket. It's true. Number three, UVU has to start strong. In both of its loss, last two losses, UVU found itself in an early first half deficit in hole. So if UVU starts strong, that's one thing. They need to finish strong and play strong throughout the game to pull out and, and win at home versus Mexico State. Yeah. And this game against New Mexico State is so big, you know, people are counting Utah Valley already out of the game. So they're going to come out with that chip on their shoulder and they're going to hit the ground running. I really feel like it's going to be a solid game Thursday night. Yeah. And that leads us into our bold predictions. This is a, a new segment we started last week and that we did for the first time we debuted it. Um, so let's take a look back on what we thought was going to happen up in Seattle. I personally think UVU is going to flex their defensive muscles. They're going to hold Seattle to 55 points offensively. 55. 55 points. Not only are they going to do that, but our boy TJ Washington he will hit the game winner, and UVU will win on the road in Seattle by one point, 56-55. That's bold. It's bold. It's, it's close. It's not bold enough. A game winner, I mean, that's cool. But UVU is going to go into Seattle and win by seven, Bryce. I'm telling you right here, my bold prediction, number one, UVU wins in Seattle on the road it's bold. by seven points. It's bold. We'll see who, we'll see who wins that one, though. My second bold prediction, Brandon Averett has 20 plus points. He will be the leading scorer for the Wolverines. He's averaging 13 on the year. Boom, bold prediction number two, Brandon Averett over 20 points. That's also bold, especially considering ESPN's FPI matchup predictor yep. gives Seattle a 70% chance to win. These are very bold predictions. Aish. <laughs> Didn't look too well, did it? No. <laughs> They, uh, they did not hold them to 55, and they uh, did not win. And TJ Washington did not hit the game winner, nor was the score 56 to 55. Nor did he score from the field. Tough game for Seattle, yeah. or against Seattle. But this week's bold predictions, we're, we're very confident that the Wolverines will bounce back. Also, we're very bold. Yeah, We're not afraid to, to shy away from it. We're going to so. put ourselves out there again this week and see... How we do. Exactly. Number one, bold prediction for me. UVU will out-rebound the Aggies at home tomorrow night. UVU is averaging 36 rebounds per game. 
they will out rebound the Aggies tomorrow night. All right. It's pretty bold. And you do it right in front of those home fans here in Orem. Better get excited. Let's go. All right. Here's my bold prediction. Let's hear it. UVU will overcome their scoring woes they had up in Seattle. And they will have not one, but three players in double digits scoring tomorrow night. One, two, and three. That's bold. That's bold. There was only one last week in Seattle. So there's going to be three. I like it. I like it. So, so far we're all in two on the year. Both me and you, there's still time for me to pull ahead. No. And I might, I, I'm going to add one more to this. Brandon Averett, this is my, my second bold prediction. Brandon Averett will lead week. all scorers tomorrow night versus New Mexico State. We'll Put see. it down. All right. Brandon Averett. I hope so. I would love that. Yeah. It's bold. I'll take an L for the team if, if UVU is going to win because of Brandon Averett. I'll take, I'll take the L. All the time. Thank you. I will, You're so kind. I will put, you know, I'll take one for the team. That's needed. Yeah. All right, one more time, your headlines before we close today. Men's basketball took a tough loss Saturday at Seattle, 83-50. to They're 7-11 overall, 1-2 and in WAC play, and they take on, like we've said, the, the New Mexico State Aggies tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the WAC Digital Network. ESPN 960 Radio. Women's basketball is on a five-game winning streak. Five games after they beat Seattle at Seattle, 70 to 58. They will face. They will play at New Mexico State tomorrow night, 6 p.m. on the WAC Digital Network. Watch it. Big time. Right before the men's. Sophomore Zane Fair and Isaac Manning have been named the Ticket Smarter WAC Men's Track and Field Athletes of the Week. Isaac Farr took home bronze in the 60-meter hurdles with a third best in UVU history, 8.19 seconds. Wow. He leads the WAC this season in that category. That's awesome. Manning took home gold in the heptathlon of the Idaho State Snake River Open. Personal record of 4,389 points, which is fourth all-time at UVU. So some exciting things happening in the track and field world of these Wolverines. And we're excited for all of our Wolverines as they have been fighting, as they've been winning, and as they're moving forward. It's been awesome. Yeah, congratulations to all of those Wolverines that played across this last week. And we hope that this upcoming week brings a lot of W's here back to Orem. Exactly. We also want to give a great shout-out to Abby Miller, who was our fourth ever Wolverine of the Week. Congratulations, Abby. Again, the Gatorade Utah Volleyball Player of the Year. We're very excited for her and what she's done. Yeah, she's joined the coveted four others that we've had. Yeah, it's been beautiful. Well, thank you. Whether it's been on YouTube or Twitter or any podcast location, we're grateful to have you join us. If you have any feedback, please let us know. We're excited to be doing this and excited for you to do sports and grow if it's possible. Yeah. But until next week, remember, protect the den.